This week in survival games was a little busier than last week with a few teaser trailers and one game leaving early access. First up was the very short teaser of the arena coming to Pal World. This will be a PvP arena where you and your team of pals takes on another player and their team of pals. While the trailer says summer 2024, that was a mistake and the devs clarified and said to expect it sometime in 2024. Next up was the announcement for a new game, Echoes of Elysium. There's a teaser trailer, but it doesn't show any gameplay, so let's check out the game's website to see what it'll be offering. So it says about the game, fire up the engines, let the wind fill your sails, and take to the skies in your hand-built fleet of airships. Treasures and secrets await your discovery throughout a fractured world of floating islands, but beware, danger lurks amidst the clouds. Mechanical wonders clash with ancient mysteries in the untamed paradise of Elysium. So you're going to have airships. It says assemble your fleet. Whether you're flying solo or team of the friends, engineer specialized airships and bring them to life. Airships are more than just transportation. They are the key to your survival and expansion. They serve as your main base of operations and offer unique capabilities like gathering raw materials, exploring new regions, and dominating the skies. Build the ship of your dreams, fight to survive against a myriad of airborne enemies, and tame the wild landscape of Elysium. Now, interesting enough, when I first saw the teaser trailer for this, it kind of reminded me of other games, and I went and did some research and found out that, yes, there are some more games coming out in the very near future or some are planned for the future that are in the survival genre. Aloft, First Dwarf, and Solar Punk are all upcoming survival games where the world is a set of, like, floating islands and you travel between them using some type of airship. So perhaps this is going to be a new subgenre in the survival uh, landscape going forward. And then the world journey to an ancient paradise filled with clockwork wonders of mysterious origin and purpose. An echo of a long forgotten name lingers on the wind of Elysium, Heron. Reveal the obscured annals of the past and procedurally created world through dynamic story progression and unique encounters. I will say that these enemies here, these NPCs look pretty cool. And then down here, we have some pictures. So there was, there's no video currently. The developers did say to expect uh, more information on the early access release sometime in the summer. So perhaps it'll come maybe during the Summer Games Fest this year. Or maybe, maybe they'll be revealing kind of uh, like what their plans are. So hopefully this game will be coming maybe later in 2024 or early 2025. But real quick, it just says build, explore, and survive. So here's the uh, way the game's going to look. It does look pretty interesting. So you can add it to your wish list. I'll leave a link for the game Steam page in the description down below. The 1.0 release for V Rising is quickly approaching. And this week, we got two pieces of news regarding it. First was the crossover with Castlevania revealed in this trailer. Second was what's coming in the 1.0 update for V-Rising. So checking out the V-Rising website, you'll see that they mentioned here the world's going to be changing. So Ruins of Mordium. After forgotten centuries, the slumbering peace of the domain of eternal night is punctured by the marching of Dracula's legion. Venture beyond the lands of man and into the shadows where ancient evil stirs. Next up is going to be the conflict zone. Gather your strength for war in the Ruins of Mordium, an endgame region that introduces dynamic conflict events to elevate your V-Rising experience, engage in skirmishes against Dracula's Legion of Noctum, and conquer rifts to claim exclusive resources. World improvements explore, experience new discoveries in Fairbane Woods, dive into the heart of Adoran in the Dunley farmlands, and unearth the legend of Dracula's demise where the iconic vampire king was defeated by, sent the, by the Church of Light. Cargo travelers, the arrogant humans of Vardoran, now traverse the world carrying precious cargo from location to location, satisfying your thirst for blood and valuable loot, at the same time intercepting their caravans and further your rise of power. 
Vardoran comes to life. More love has been put into the visuals of the world. The wilds have been sprinkled with touches of additional flavor and life to enrich the setting. Our new light engine lets us better handcraft the moods all across Vardoran. Next up is going to be a change to the way you can play the game in terms of difficulty. So they're going to be adding the ability to select your difficulty options here. So it says shape your journey, new ways to play. V-Rising now offers easy solutions to choose your level of difficulty. You can now choose the brutal experience designed for seasoned vampires to test their wits against enemies and V-Bloods with new advanced techniques, exciting twists, and to spice up your journey. So the standard mode is going to be, I guess, what's been in the game up to this point. An experience focused on exploration building and challenging combat. Relax is going to be for those that favor exploration building and a more relaxed combat. And Brutal is going to be face devastating challenges in a world with more with evolved adversaries. So basically, it's just going to be uh, easy, normal, and uh, difficult. Next up is going to be the big reveal here, which is going to be new enemies. First up is going to be Dracula. So Dracula looks like he's going to be the end game boss of the game. Dracula has been biding his time and gathering his power in the depths of the Shadow Realm. His servants flood the land, gathering blood to fuel his return. But Vordoran can only have one apex predator. Ride into Mordium, strike into the heart of Dracula's castle, pierce the Shadow Realm, and cut down history's greatest tyrant to claim ultimate supremacy. Also, there's going to be some new bosses added to Dracula's Legion. Face off against a new enemy, the fearsome Draculan monstrosities of the Legion of Nocturne. Battle with the mighty generals, the highest echelon of Dracula's court. Alina the Hollow, Cassius the Betrayer, and Valencia the Depraved. So it looks like three new bosses that'll be in the world. And then this is going back to that crossover trailer, Enemy, Simon Belmont. Prepare for an encounter with Simon Belmont as the legendary vampire hunter ventures into Vardoran. You have the courage to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the heir of the Belmont clan, master of the powerful whip. There's also going to be some changes to combat, so improve magic. Your mastery of dark sorcery is more versatile than ever. Immerse yourself in newfound possibilities by unlocking spells in the order that best suits your playstyle. Unite your clan and share a powerful well of passive magic bonuses. If you've not played the game before, the, the, the way the game basically works is... Each boss you defeat unlocks uh, more powers and stuff like that and improved gear. So it's looking like they're going to give you a, a better way of kind of unlocking what you want in specific orders. Because as the game stands right now, it's kind of a pretty linear experience that you progress through each boss as they uh, get more difficult. So we'll, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. There's going to be some new weapons. Draw your bowstring and pick off your foes with pinpoint precision. Or throw your whip and lash out at your enemies with unparalleled deadly grace. With brand new weapons at your disposal, there are more methods than ever to dish out death. Then new unique, unique weapons. Conquer all obstacles with an all-new arsenal of Apex legendary weapons. Each one specifically towered to a different play style. Choose your armament. Ancestral upgrades. No matter what, how you rise, never abandon your weapons of war. The Ancestral Forge now upgrades your legendary weapons to keep them with your progress, meaning you never have to choose between a new tier of tool and your uh, favorite set of blood drinking axes. So over here, I think it has like... So basically, you can increase its uh, level here, which is pretty interesting. Because in the past, basically, you would just get a weapon and then get new weapons and just keep going on and on and on, leaving behind the previous set. Spider form. In V-Rising, you can transform into various different creatures. The first one, I believe, is the wolf that you can transfer into or uh, transform into. Skitter to safety as the spider. Change your form to help you give, give your enemies the slip and protect yourself from the enemy's watchful eyes and burning rays of sunlight by hiding in the soil itself, never to be caught and out vulnerable again. So that's pretty cool because right here, it's going to show you're burying yourself. So you're hiding from the uh, NPCs here as well as taking protection from the sunlight because, of course, as a vampire, sunlight is very deadly to you. New armor to go along with the uh, new weapon sets here. Elevate your vampire status with an entirely new level of armor and equipment and get geared up to face the greatest threat to your rule yet. On your way to greatness, tailor your garments to your whims with a fresh variety of armor sets that enhance different styles of play. Next up is relocate your castle trapped in your first home in Fairbane. Now using nothing more than a little vampire magic, you can move from any plot in the world to any other available one by laying down the framework and pressing a button. So this will be really cool if you can move your entire castle because setting up a base in Fairbane, which is the very first area that you're in, and then you go to all these other places in the map going back and forth can become quite time consuming, even with the fast travel. This will be awesome if you can just kind of press a button and it just moves your entire castle to a new location, just so you don't have to spend all that time uh, moving everything. So it's going to have seamless item management, new castle decor, music player. Down here, we got some customization. So Eternal Elegance, elevate your vampire vampiric persona with enhanced customization options. Unleash your creativity as you color dye outfits while displaying any appearance you want with 10 plus new armor sets to mix and match however you like. You can achieve your fantasy. Additional features are going to be gamepad support, achievement system, and new music, all for the 1.0 update, which will be on May 8th on Steam. It'll also be coming to PlayStation 5 later this year. So that was all the news for this past week. There were no new survival games released this week, but the Planet Crafter left early access. I'll leave a link to my first impressions video in the description down below. Looking ahead to next week, there's one new survival game coming to Steam early access in Survival Nation Lost Horizon. It looks similar to Project Zomboid and the more recent Humanity. 
The game will allow you to play solo or online via with PvP and PvE servers and will be available to play on Monday, April 15th. The other big news for next week is the 1.4 fully yoked update for Grounded to coincide with the game's release on PlayStation 4 and 5 and Nintendo Switch. This update adds New Game Plus, 3 Ant Queens, and much more. I'll leave a link to my preview video in the description. The final planned update for Grounded will be available on Tuesday, April 16th. That's it for this week in Survival Games. If you found this video interesting, hit the like button and subscribe for more survival gaming content. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.